loving hands perfecting me to make me more like you. King of kings and Lord of peace, you sanctify me through the What is going on? What's going on? What's going on, everybody? My name is Kenneth Allen Thomas, and welcome to another episode of Unshakable Conversations with your favorite couple, might I add. <laughs> all right. My name is Kenneth Allen Thomas, and this is my beautiful wife, Miss Jocelyn Thomas. Josie Lynn is what they call her. Oh, it. Lord. <laughs> no, that's not what they call me, but that's the but legit nah, name. Y'all can, call, y'all, can call, y'all can call her Josie. So listen, everybody, make sure you guys go ahead and like, subscribe, and all of that good stuff you know because guess what we're going to be having some great conversations we're talking about it all we're talking about the things that we've been through in life and it may be able to help you and how to overcome if you don't know who we are we are a couple that's been together for a little over a decade now and guess what we have five children and guess what we look very young and at the same time we're not that young, but we are that young. <laughs> Amen. So uh, we we just want you guys to go ahead and grab a cup of coffee, grab some water, grab whatever it is. I got my I got my fruit. You know, my wife got her water. She got her Canada Dry. You know, show the Canada Dry. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and we are ready to rock and roll with today's conversation. And we're going to be talking about uh, depression. We're going to be talking about something that uh, my wife uh, actually wanted to get into. Um, you know, anybody ever felt depressed in a sense of you feel like there's no hope you feel like there is nothing else left and you're trying to get to the next level so today we're going to dive in a little bit more in how to overcome that depression whether it's within your faith within your relationship maybe your marriage within your parenting whatever it is we've pretty much faced a lot of those different challenges and we're ready to talk about them and and test them out so honey yeah yo um you look good (laughs) <laughs> stop <laughs> thank you Yo. yeah buddy my so, hype man that's all me yeah yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> all right so listen babe um we are now here um in texas we've been here a little over 30 days now and prior to that we were going through so much when it came to um getting to another level right and getting to that next level in in terms of just figuring out a way to get out of the mess that get we were unstuck. in. Right? Get unstuck. We were in the, the financial rut. We were in the opportunity rut. We were feeling the rejection. We were feeling all these different things. And I think a lot of our followers uh, go through the same thing as well, too. And I posted something inside the broadcast. And if you're not part of the broadcast and everything on Instagram, make sure you guys go ahead and get into that. Just follow us on Instagram and, and you can get into our broadcast where we post there daily. But I posted a uh, question like, what's the single biggest struggle that you're facing this year? And most people said it's either their finances, uh, their confidence, or their resilience, right? So those three factors we identify with heavily because we've been through them all. So Go ahead. The floor is yours, babe. Go ahead and tell the tell the folks on what you've been going through the past ten years in terms of you know depression because we've we've had it all right from our mm-hmm. son battling cancer to house being up for sale to not having no money to having a negative forty five dollars in our bank account <laughs> forty five. <laughs> I um I think from what I recall, um, I think the biggest part of me remembering like the deepest part of my depression was probably after Christian had cancer. Mm. Um, Not that I didn't struggle before because I did, but I don't really um, recall exactly what made me go into that. I know as far as when we were in the treatments for Christian um, and coming out of that, it was a blessing to know that, you know, he was cancer free after his first, you know, round was over. And then coming home from that after about what, five months about. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, we lost our studio. We almost lost our home. It was just like so much that we've worked so hard for. We were losing. Um, but, you know, we 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 built that up because when we first got together, we didn't really have anything even together, you know? 
So being that we built up the home that we had lived in, we built up the studio, so many kids that were coming, you know, to be with us in a dance studio and just, you know, renovate in whatever needed to be renovated in that building and um, furnishing that place and just all the hard work. And it was like, yeah, yeah, this is it. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, that made me fall into a depression, mm -hmm. not really knowing where money was going to come from. Mm. Um, I hadn't been working. It was just hard all around. Yeah. And so I started feeling like, what am I here for? Like, why am I living? What am I living for? You know, it, it was started to become life started to become a routine for me. Um, which was hard, but, you know, I was able to pop up out of that depression by, you know, I asked you for the cricket yeah. maker, the yeah. cricket. I remember that. And um, that was a sacrifice because we didn't really have the money, but I was like, oh, you know, I can make the money back. And that Christmas we did really well. Like mm -hmm. I made the money back plus more um, just making apparel, making shirts, making hats, making mugs, just making things like, like the that. Shit that I got on right here. Yes, you isn't I mean? it fly? Same, same God yesterday, <laughs> today, and forevermore. Amen. But keep going, keep going, keep going. And y'all can get this on our Etsy shop and everything, by the way, too. Just want to drop that. Plug. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, so that helped me get out because I started feeling like I had some sort of purpose. Yeah. I started feeling like, okay, you know this is fun. This, I enjoy this. I enjoy creating, you know, shirts. I enjoy creating whatever it was that I was making. So I started having a really good time with it. And then months went by and I just found myself just falling again mm. into a dark place. Mm. And it was a pretty wild roller coaster because I, every time I would feel myself getting in, I would, you know, voice it to you and you would kind of like help me pull back out yeah. or be like okay we're not going back there yeah remember xyz how you was there before you need to get back out you know and so it kept allowing me to even the days where i wanted to feel like i felt like i was falling back in yeah just to pop back out of that yeah so yeah you know i think as a husband and as your husband I hated those days. I hated those days because for me, being the positive guy that I am, if in knowing what I know, in some ways, if I'm being fully honest, it made me feel like I wasn't doing enough. It made me feel like <clears throat> no matter how positive I am, no matter how much faith I got, no matter what, it's like, what more do I have to do to get my wife out of this funk? And it was more than just the finances. It was more than that. That's a part of it, but it was more so like, like there was other things that were still going on, right? Rejection in some areas, whether it be in the church or outside of the church. Um, you know, opportunities missed, <clears throat> you know, where we feel like, okay, um, I'm getting an opportunity for 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 work or something like that, and then something falls through for whatever reason. Like it was literally like a door will open, companies would be interested, and then boom, like they wouldn't be interested anymore. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, we have some hope that this is this is flowing through, and it's, it's like, how come every time I'm getting rejected for all these things? And maybe that 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 is one of the reasons why you know we're here in texas right maybe god was telling us all along like listen you're not supposed to be here right but at the same time there was still more to learn in those situations but i do believe that like a lot of times the things that we go through we may not understand it in that season right. and it may be so frustrating because we were super frustrated to the point where some days i just wanted to give up the rejection, you know, that we may have faced in the church building, it was like, sometimes I don't want to, I don't even want to go to church no more. How many times did I voice to you and Lord knows how many times I voiced to him? Like, I'm done. I'm done going to church. I'm not going back. You know, I'm feeling this way, all of that kind of stuff. And I just didn't want to go back. But it's like that verse where it says that, you know, 
the word of God is so shut up in our bones that yeah. it, we just cannot we quit. No matter how much we want to quit, mm. we can't quit. Yeah. And there were so many times where I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to church. Mm. I'm not going to church today. Or mm. I'm not going to church when the next time church yeah. comes around. Like, I'm, I'm done. Like, I'm putting my foot down. I'm not going. Yeah. And then that day would come and I would be like, I'm going to go. Yeah. And even if I spent the service crying my eyes out or mm. breaking down or whatever the case was, I left it. You yeah. know, Lord, take this, you know. Um, but it was always like, I think one thing that <clears throat> helped me get out was also like Carmen. Mm. I felt like, I don't know if you remember Shout a lot of this. Carmen. Shout out to Carmen. <laughs> I feel like a lot of times, like every time I would feel yeah. that way, like, I don't want to do this no more, Lord. I'm done. I'm done with everything. I'm done with this cycle. I'm done with life. I'm done with just everything that I was facing. And in that moment, I would hear my phone ring. Yeah. And I would be like, hello. And it would be Carmen. Mm. And it was like the Holy Spirit was putting me on her heart to reach out to me. And she would just hear it in my voice. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times she didn't even have to say what's wrong or mm. like, what's up or like anything. All she did was come on, let's pray. Yeah. That was the first thing she that said. Come on, let's pray. And then we would pray. Sometimes I would tell her what was going on. And sometimes I would cry it out. Mm. We would pray. And that was the end of our conversation. Yeah. And those moments helped so i tell people and i even do this be intentional when the lord lays someone on your heart yeah because you never know the reason why the lord is laying them on your heart don't ignore when the lord lays someone on your heart because it it could be that they just need someone to hear it could be that they just need to cry on someone's shoulder it could be that they're going through a really really hard time and we don't always have to dig deep into what it is that other people are going through. Sometimes people just need you to be there just to hear, yeah. just to listen, just to say, I know right now it's messy, but eventually it's going to be okay. And her favorite saying to me was always all is well, mm. all is well. And the comfort that it would bring me just to pull me out of that, you know, that moment that I was in, even if it was just for that moment alone, it helped. You know, it's like, I, f I feel like we all need that, that one friend in our life um, that is always looking out for us, right? That watchman, that watch woman that's always watching out for us for some reason, some way, shape, or form. And I believe that God supplies us with those people. But when you say be intentional, when somebody gets laid on your heart, that's something that I do fervently, like, all the time, right? Like, my closest people know that if I call you, like I'm calling you for for a reason because God laid, laid it on my heart. I'm I'm the type of person if I'm driving, like the second that somebody is downloaded into my system to where like oh I, I gotta go call that person, right? Oftentimes, what do we do? Somebody will um, be, you know, in our spirit and they'll just pop up in our mind, and then we'll say we'll call them later. We'll call them later. We'll call them later. But what if you can't call them later? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's important for us to be intentional about, you know, um, the people in our life that maybe it was somebody that rejected you and that person popped up in your mind for a reason. Maybe you need to go mend that relationship. Maybe it was somebody that you haven't spoken to and somebody that you call a friend for a long time and you need to call that person because they may need you at that moment in that particular time. You ain't thought about them in months, but for some reason they popped up in your mind. It just doesn't happen you know, out of coincidence. It happens because God is telling you specifically to go and check in on this person. No, this person needs your voice right now. This mm -hmm. person needs to hear from you right now and nobody else because can't nobody i'm going to speak through you to them and oftentimes we ignore it and then what happens something may happen where god was trying to use you in order to get to them and you could have prevented them from something doing something that that could have altered their life for, mm -hmm. for whatever reason right in those times of struggle in those times of like you know, where you were going through like the depressions and everything. Sometimes if I'm being honest, I would be beating myself up in the basement. And 
I'll be in the basement, like crying my eyes out to God, two, three o'clock in the morning, because I'm like, what am I? What am I doing wrong? Right? I'm I'm here for my family. I'm a I'm an active father. I'm doing the best for my community. I'm doing everything that I can to um, to bring you know finances into my home. I mean, nothing never got turned off and everything. We just never had anything extra, mm -hmm. you know, to do other things. And it, it just always seemed like we were just living paycheck to paycheck type of thing. And it just got tiring and tiring and tiring. And that takes a toll. And then it would just be like, I don't want my wife to feel like this. Like one of the things that you will oftentimes say, like the happiest you felt was in like 2016, mm -hmm. like the year that we got married. And I'm like, dang, yo, for the past several years, my wife hasn't been happy. What am I doing wrong? Where, where, where am I at? And I think that this is where a lot of men have to kind of redirect and take accountability for what it is that they're doing, right? And it may not just be me, right? It, 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 these, these things happen, but it may not necessarily be my fault, right? But I live by a, by a saying that it's not my fault, but it's, it's my responsibility, responsibility yeah. right? It's not my fault that these things, some of these things are happening, but it is my responsibility, right? So... I lean that I lean on the fact that a you know if I'm if I'm your husband you're my bride like you know Jesus is you know is is the bridegroom we you know and we we are we are the ones that are married to him and he's going to take care of us so I have to do the same thing inside my household and I remember I remember a time where I'm sitting there and I'm looking you know, in, in the Bible, and it says, you know, if a man does, who doesn't provide for his own is looked at as an unbeliever, mm -hmm. and that, to me, some people may not look at it like this, but I do. That's one of the most scariest verses in the Bible. When you sit there and you claim to be a believer, and then you can't provide for your family. Now, here's the, here's the twist, right? We have to understand who is our provider, Right. If God is our provider, we have to take that on. And I wasn't taking that on for a long time. I was thinking that, oh, it's all me. I got to provide. I got to do it. But no, God says, if I'm your provider, let me provide for you. And then all these things will flow through. Right. So the second that we sit there and take it to another level and understand, that, OK, allow me to surrender. Can you stop trying to do everything by yourself? Mm -hmm. And allow God to go ahead and do it. Yes, the word says that for a man that is not, a, you know, a provider is like an unbeliever. But at the same time, if I believe, then I know that he's my provider. And he's going to help me through it. He's going to help me with these opportunities to go to that next level. It, it hurt me deeply every time that you would sit there and say, I'm emotional or you feel anxious or you feel depressed or you don't want to be here no more. And I just I rebuke all of that every time that you would sit there and talk about it. Like I would just rebuke it because I'm like, yo, that's not my wife. That's not the one that that is is very, very happy all the time. That's not the one that's giving all the time. That's not the one that's loving all the time. Like, no, like enemy, you can't have my wife you don't know how many times i've prayed that prayer and i don't know who needs to hear this and what husband needs to hear this but you need to sit there and be praying for your wife you need to be praying for your children you can't have my wife you can't have my kids you can't have my money you can't have my job you can't have my business you can't have my house you need to be praying those prayers and everything over your family because they work because the enemy is going to try you the enemy is going to test you but if you are not in the war room if you are not in the battlefield then guess what you're allowing that door to remain open and it's our job to close the door but the one that provides for us allows us to close those doors for the right ones to be open yeah Amen. i think on the flip side of that for me in that season the lord was dealing with me because um i had a lot of like anger towards you sometimes because i would be like we want better we want this we want that but yeah. like I know you were grinding and working hard and doing what you had to do. I'm not saying like you were lazy or you wanted to, you was grinding, but I think it was just super frustrating that you just kept getting denied or rejected. And I'm like, uh, you know? And then for me, I was just like, um, being dealt with by the, by God, because I'm like, he just kept implanting in me. Mm. Like you're get, getting angry at your husband because you expect him to, like provide make you happy give you all these things whatever 
And you're supposed to be looking to me as mm. your ultimate provider. Yeah. And even in the not let's let's remove materialistic. I'm talking about emotional standpoint at this point. Mm. If there were days where I'm like, OK, well, we just had a conversation and I still feel the same way or, you know, I want him to come up here and like make me feel better or whatever the case is. And and it wasn't happening in that moment. It was like the Lord's like, but I'm right here. Mm. Like, why do you feel like you need to go to him first? Mm. I'm your ultimate provider. I'm your ultimate person that you should be running to, not your husband. Like your husband is a human. Mm. Your husband's going to fall and fail sometimes. He's not going to be able to provide everything that I can provide. Mm. I'm your number one provider. Mm. Stop looking to your husband like if he's your God. Yeah. And I was like. Wow. And he dealt with me for many months on that mm. where I felt like I kept putting a huge burden on top of you that you were already dealing with in regards to work, not finding the work that you did want, not finding the work that you deserved, things like that, where, you know, the the Lord was just like, he has already dealing with all of this. And then here you go clumping this on top of it where when that's what I'm here for. Yeah. So I had to learn to stop running to you for every single thing in every moment because I'm like, he's going to collapse one day. Wow. Because you can only take but so much, you know, like I feel like as wives, we have no idea the burdens our husbands carry on their shoulders. Mm. They may feel and look strong in front of us because they're not as emotional as women or whatever the, the case is. But there are moments where I'm sure they want to collapse. I'm sure they want to give up. I'm sure they want to run away. I'm sure they want to drop to their knees and cry. And like everything that we face, they probably feel a hundred times worse than we do. We just don't really see it as much as you would see it in a woman because we're more okay to express our feelings you know versus a man where the man tries to hide it um but i do feel that our men are facing battles that we have no idea of and battles that they may not speak of and we need to be a little bit more um i guess open to hearing them out and it doesn't show that they're weak if anything it shows that they're strong um but just being a little bit more open to just kind of like hearing them out and knowing that they're going through as well way more than we are but i feel like women in these days we're very easily to express and that's okay but i just wish that we as women gave them a little bit more um freedom to express themselves and instead of like being judgy or judging them Thank you for that. Because Lord knows like how many times I sit here and I feel like a failure. And like how I felt I was doing everything right, but it felt like I was doing everything wrong at the same time and the weight of what we carry see it's expected that you know in society that we carry this weight that we carry this thing and like there's there's just a weight that 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 men carry and i don't think that anybody will understand like if you're not a man if you're not somebody that is in this position mm -hmm. and you're leading your household and you're trying to get your family to the next level the next level the next level it's not like you ever really make it right there's always something there's always like we, we're going through stuff even even in this season like we're still trying to get to another mm -hmm, level it's mm -hmm. not like it actually stops right don't actually think that because now we're in a um, what looks like a comfortable place Absolutely. or whatever, you know, and it is comfortable and it is, you know, a blessing. You know what I'm saying? That the challenges stop, they don't. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're still a parent. You still got worries over your children. Yep. You're still trying to make sure that you operate your household accordingly. And there are still things that, that you know, that happen. So does it, is it, is it easier? I, I wouldn't say it's easier. It's I just different. It's just different, right? And I just... I'm gonna be honest, yo. Like sometimes I feel like 
you know, when you were going through those things, um, those are moments where I would just be like, what, you know, Lord, I don't know what to do. Because I'm used to being like the guy that knows what to do. Something happens. Boom. But in certain moments, it's like, I, I don't know what to do. Right. And the moments where you would be like, I don't know what to do or like just would say a little bit and not give me like a lot. I would get even more frustrated. Like he's this positive guy. He has the <laughs> right words to say all the time at the right time to the right, right people, all of that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then it's like when it comes to me, yes, a lot of times you have helped me out of that. But the few moments that I guess I don't know what you were facing or feeling or whatever the case is that you would just be like, just give me a little bit and it wouldn't make me feel better in that moment. That's where I'm saying where the Lord was like, well, I need you to lean, lean on me, not him. You know, mm. I would be so frustrated. Like, aren't you Mr. Positive? Like, I obviously I wouldn't tell it, but yeah. in my head, I'm like, aren't you Mr. Positive? You're supposed to be making me feel better right now. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's when the Lord would creep in. Like, no, yeah. I'm supposed to be making you feel better. Mm -hmm. You know, stop putting this on this man. Yeah. You know, and it's in, and, and this is where it goes to where, even sometimes a little bit that I would give or not say nothing at all. This is where we get frustrated with God because we'll ask God and we'll lean on God and God may only give us a little bit, but we're expecting more, right? But you can't expect more if your heart is not open to more. Mm -hmm. and in those moments, maybe your heart wasn't really open to receiving so much. And I, I was probably maybe a little bit timid to, you know, <laughs> uh, to actually try and pour in more because it was going to overflow. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like you don't want to put in more water into the pot because if you put too much water in, eventually it's going to overflow. And you got to, it's got to be measured at a certain, certain level. And sometimes with what you are feeling inside the moment, didn't necessarily require me to say anything and the Lord would just shut me up. Right. And in turn, he was saying to you, lean on me. So sometimes I'd be shut up on purpose. Not that I didn't want to give anything to you. Of course I would. But the fact is, is that if I'm not receiving on what to get, I don't know. I'm out right now. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm out. Like I'm out of like whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Like I get it. Like I, I know that people feel like okay, you're supposed to be the 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 motivational guy, the coach. You're 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 that guy and everything. And yeah. yes, I am. That is a blessing. That is my gift, right? But if the Lord shuts me up, what else am I supposed to do? Right. Sometimes it's it's not on me. It's on the individual to lean their heart more towards him than the human. Like I'm the human. I'm not the God. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like there were those times where I would even just be like, you know what? God, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. And this fun. This is so funny. Now I can laugh at it now. But <laughs> I used to you don't know that I never did this or whatever. <laughs> so I'm about to tell you there'd be times where we would get into an argument or something like that, or you would want me to make you feel better, and I'd be so upset, and I would leave, and I would go into the car, and I'd be screaming at God, I'd be like, yo, you better deal with her, God. You you better deal with her, because I can't no more right now. Like, <laughs> I can't. Like, she she's sitting there tripping. Get your, get, your, get your daughter, Lord. Get your daughter, because, yo, like, she, I'm, I, I tried, I tried, but you... <laughs> Yo, because if I go back in there, I'm telling you what's going to happen. This woman that you gave me. <laughs> That's what I was like. I was like, the woman that you gave me or whatever is the one. And I would sit here like so frustrated because either A, I did give you something and you just didn't want it. <laughs> you didn't want what I gave you. And I would sit here and be so frustrated. And I just like, you know what? Forget it. Like, I'm, I'm out. And it would just be... Like, we would just have to separate ourselves for a second to calm ourselves down and then join back together because tempers were high. And sometimes, and this is a lesson for everybody, right? Sometimes that's the most healthy thing that you can do. The healthy thing to do is to reset and take take that time out before you say something that you don't 
that that you, re- you, yeah. that you might regret you know what i'm saying or do something that you might regret and sometimes you really need to go to separate corners for a second you know before you get jump back into the next round that's good you know what i'm saying and I, when i say when i say corners i mean like you know in boxing like you go to the separate corners all right round over go to your separate corners take a break before y'all jump back in because the reality is is if we don't like things break it's gonna escalate people break relationships all that stuff you know so you have to really peel back and then start asking yourself this question this is what i did i would say okay god deal with me what did i say Mm -hmm. where did i go wrong how do i fix it versus like pointing the finger Mm -hmm. all the Mm -hmm. time at you sometimes i would sit there and be like no she's 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 really wrong on this one (laughs) right but a lot of times I'm like, okay, God, what did I do to trigger the reaction? What did I do to trigger the emotion? What did I do that allowed my wife to feel the way that she feels? Because she clearly feels like this for for a reason. So what did I do something and where was I wrong at? And sometimes I would call a lifeline. Like, am I wrong here? Right? Here's my side. Here's her side. Am I wrong here? Because I, I need to make sure that I'm I'm clear on this because I don't want to go back into the next round and we still throwing bows. Amen. Amen. Who would you call in? <laughs> I would call Adrian. Um, I would call Adrian most times and everything. He would kind of just like walk me through. Or I'll call my brother, you know, and talk to him and everything. He probably talked me out of it because he <laughs> yeah. you know, so those are like my my guys or whatever that I would call and everything all the time. Why are you like, who you calling? <laughs> who all up in our business? Like, who you telling that I'll be sitting there? <laughs> that part. <laughs> you know, but I'm not sure who this is for, right? But you, there are people right now that are frustrated. They're frustrated with their finances. They're frustrated in life. They're trying to get to another level. They're yeah. living vicariously through other people. They're seeing stuff and everything on IG. It's There's, harder because we have social media. I feel like before we had social media, it wasn't as challenging yeah. because there wasn't so much comparison in the world, in life. You know, and I feel like now there's so much comparison because everybody's seeing what everybody else is doing. And many times we can see that someone else is doing it and they're, oh, my God, they're living their best life. They're super happy. They're so in love. They have the perfect family, the perfect house, the perfect kids, the perfect car, the perfect dog. Everything is perfect. But inside that home, you have no idea what people are going through. Mm. I have seen so many people that I've known personally that just seem so happy and their life is so perfect. And then a couple years down the line, you go and you look and you're like, oh, my God, they're divorced. They've been putting up that they went through this for the past five years but the last two years i've been like oh my god their life is so perfect they're so this they're so that you know what i mean so it's like you can't always just like live your life off of what you see on social media because a lot of times it's not even reality if i'm being honest and, and and just to piggyback off of that like watch the person that smiles all the time that's happy all the time most times it's a highlight. Mm-hmm. I think for us, what we have shown on our social media pages is we've shown those downfalls. We've shown we're going through it. We've shown the, that, that time of depression, that time of fear or worry or whatever it was that was going through. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Most times that we try to, that, that on social media, we're showing up for other people. Mm-hmm. Because we know that a lot of people count on us. Yeah. And we want to be there for them. But there are times where I say, yeah, I need y'all to pray for me right now. Because I'm going through this right now. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to give anybody the, the impression that we're always. That we have perfect life. That we we don't go through life. anything. No. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you sit here and you try, like, I, I'll just keep it a buck with y'all. Like, there, there were times where I'm like, okay, I got three dollars in my bank account i don't get paid till for another two days you know what i'm saying um and 
what do I, all right, we got food, so we straight on that, but I ain't got no gas to get mm-hmm. to the job. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Psh, listen, I'm just going to have to go in a negative. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and swipe this card, you know what I mean? And, yeah. And it's going to take a dollar off, <laughs> and I'm going to fill the tank up. At least we got gas and this and everything to hold us over. We was living in a holdover type of lifestyle for so long, and I just don't want anybody to get the impression that all is over always well right the thing here's the trick the trick not the trick but here was the thing the blessing was is that we always remain faithful god is going to bring us through Mm -hmm. no matter what if you are faithful in a little he will bless you and make you ruler over much i think that is the biggest thing about us that even in the moments where we wanted to quit and where many people would have been like why haven't you quit like why are you still doing this or that or going you know in the times where we could have not saying that it would have been right we did not Mm -hmm. we stayed faithful we stayed prayed up we stayed reading our word even if we didn't feel like it because i'd be lying if i said oh we we're jumping to joy every time we go read our bible no there were times we didn't want to read our bible there were times we didn't want to go to church there were times we did not want to worship Mm -hmm. and we just kept pushing through we kept pushing through 10 years yeah that's a long time a long time like it's like (laughs) our timing and God's timing is super different where he may look because timing is nothing to him he may be looking at us like 10 years ain't nothing while we're over here like oh my god 10 years feels like a lifetime you know for us human beings 10 years is a long time to go through the struggle to go through feeling like every time we feel like we're getting back on on top you know it's like boom we get slapped 10 steps down again it was like we can we cannot catch a break yeah so i hear him saying to somebody i need you to feel it like i i need you to feel this right now i need you to feel this season right now you don't want to go through this season Mm -hmm. but i'm telling you you have to go through the season because it's going to be glory on the other side Mm -hmm glory for me right glory for what it is that i am pulling and drawing out of you yeah right he's extracting right now he's extracting something out of you right and it's very very painful yeah pricking he's, and pruning. He, he's pricking he's pulling right he's molding he's shaping see the issue is is that a lot of us don't want to go through the molding a lot of us don't want to go through the shaping and a lot of us don't want to be put into the kennel we don't want to be put into the fire right because that fire is hot mm-hmm. right but you said that god i know you called me for something and i'm willing to accept it you got to be careful with what you say because if you say that you're willing to accept it then that means you're willing to take on everything with it and it's going to be painful sometimes it's not going to be glorious it's not going to be you know glamorous right and some of y'all have been riding high and some of some people have had a lot of success and guess what now he sat you down Mm -hmm. and when he sat you down he sat you down for a reason because guess what i need you to sit and i need you to lay back and i need you to watch for a second right and oftentimes when that happens it's the lord saying you know there's too much going on I need you to sit back. I need you to relax. The Bible says that he lies me down in green pastures. He makes me he lay down. makes me lay mm-hmm. down in green pastures and leads me to still waters. Mm-hmm. So why does he say that, right? So I did some reading. And that is uh, Psalm 23, verse number two, right? I read the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and what the Lord says. So it says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters, right? And just to give you guys a little bit extra on this, right? The Lord, as a as a shepherd, knew how to make David rest when he needed mm-hmm. to, right? Just as a, a a literal shepherd, you know, for his for his sheep, mm-hmm. right? The the implication is that a sheep doesn't always know what it needs. Mm right and what is best for itself sometimes we don't know what we need or what's best for us but our shepherd the lord so always good. knows mm-hmm. what we need and what's best for us so if he's saying it's time to sit down it's time to sit down and another reason why is because guess what sheep don't have great vision mm-hmm. right and because they don't have great vision they're going to wander off into other pastures yeah. and other places and it's the lord that will sit there and yank us back into the mix into the fold mm-hmm. right so check this out 
to lie down in green pastures. The, the shepherd is also, um, you know, he's he knew the good places to make his sheep rest, right? He faithfully guides the sheep to green pastures. So Philip Keller said this. This is so good. He says, um, he writes that sheep do not lie down easily and will not unless four conditions are met. Number one, because they are timid, they will not lie down if they are afraid. Because they are social animals, they will not lie down if there is friction among the sheep. Number three, if flies or parasites trouble them, they will not lie down. And finally, if sheep are anxious about food or hungry, they will not lie down. Rest comes because the shepherd has dealt with fear, friction, flies, and famine. Mm. And I feel that that's for somebody out there, right? That's good. The reason why you resting right now, because A, is either some fear going on, is some flies going on, is some friction going on, is some parasites, is a famine going on, is somebody that's eating it up. And you have to lie down, right? And he's going to lead you to the still waters, Amen. So some of us, when you say grinding and I was grinding so much, I think that the Lord was telling me, like, you need to sit down and you need to hold off for a second because a lot of us are on Instagram and you're doing a lot, mm -hmm. but you busy being busy. And sometimes being busy, you kind of missing it. Yep. Excuse me. But some people will not be on Instagram for a long time and the page is up and then when it comes time they're ready to launch you know what I'm saying there are a lot of artists that do this they have this particular um, uh, strategy um, you know where they won't post for a long time and they're just focused on making the project because a they know their audience they know who they're speaking to and they know when they come back to social media that they're going to be well received mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right some of us don't get off social media because we feel like people are going to leave Dwindle. us yeah where where are you at right or the, if i don't show up for them then I'm going to lose my fan base. I'm going to lose my following. Listen, yo, if you got a couple thousand followers, yo, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to like rain in your parade, but they ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. If you have something valuable to give, new people will show up. And if it's not for them, it's not for them, you know? So I want to encourage somebody like with in, you know, I know we veered off a little bit, but I want to encourage somebody with that. Like sometimes you got to sit down and redirect yourself so that the Lord can guide you and put you better into a much better position. Lord knows I I get off lots of times. Hundred percent for months. Yeah, I deactivate. I step away because I need that break. Yeah, I really do. Um, but I was going to say it's really hard because um, going back to to the depression, I wanted to touch um, that there were moments where. Like, I didn't even want to get out of bed. Yeah. Like. I hated those days. Getting a shower was almost, like, impossible that day. Yeah. I mean, I showered every day, obviously, of course. But, <laughs> um, you know, just peeling myself off the bed was hard. Mm. And then just knowing that, like, the boys needed me. But praise God for them because I almost feel like if I didn't have the boys, what would really be? I wouldn't. What would yeah. I need to get up? You know what I mean? Yeah. I would really probably be in a slump um so that was really hard too just like feeling like i don't want to get up out of bed i don't want to do anything i don't want to get myself together i don't want to get dressed i don't want to go nowhere mm. just i just want to be here yeah you know and so um it took a while to know that like i still have purpose yeah. you know um i know the verse that i've been kind of like just sitting on this past year was Esther four fourteen. Yeah. You have been created for such a time mm -hmm. as this. Yeah. You know? And um that's just the word that I'm holding on to. Mm. I think that um those days where you said you didn't wanna like get out of bed and those were days that I went extra hard that I had to put in two hundred percent instead of a hundred percent. You know, I had to take on your your you know, your load, your weight. 
and all right, let me get the boys, let me get them ready, let me do this, let me do that, let me do all I can, right, and push, push, push. And sometimes it would be the hardest thing not to sit there with you because that's what I would want to do. What the enemy would want me to do is, okay, your wife is, and this is where the enemy tries to play tricks, right? Mm -hmm. When you say that you're supposed to be there for your wife through thick and thin, you say you're supposed to be there for your wife and everything, even in these in these times and needs. How come you're not upstairs with her? Mm-hmm. You know, how come you're not upstairs, you know, sitting with her? Mm-hmm. Because if I'm if I stay upstairs, then nothing will get done. Right. The house won't move. The operation won't continue to go. You know what? What happens if I'm not there? What happens if you're not there? Right. We still have, you know, we still got to run this operation here no matter what. And I would be praying for you. That the Lord, you know, soften your heart enough to get peeled up out of bed so that you can start moving and start feeling better. Or I would be praying that somebody would call. And sometimes I would even sit there and be <laughs> like, yo, um, yo, Mama Carolyn, yo, you got to call her. <laughs> yeah, I remember I remember the one time, didn't you like hit Patora up? Like I sure did. Get your girl. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. I said, I said, I said, Pastor Therese, I said, listen, yo, Josie is going through X, Y, and Z right now, and I can't do it. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? We can't be afraid to be in a position that and, and say that we just ain't got it right now. Yeah. I ain't got it today. So you got to be able to lean on other people. That's what I think a good leader does. Good leaders know that you don't have to be Superman or superwoman, you know, all the time. Good leaders understand and they know that no matter what it looks like, you're going to be able to lean on other individuals that's on your team. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you can't you can't always feel like you can do it all by yourself. And I think that that is the key, one of the keys to being a great leader that I've learned that nobody could do it alone. And the second that we know that we understand that we can't do it alone and we start leaning on other people to help us through, I think that that elevates everything else and it elevates your level of leadership and everything as well, too. But I I feel like for us, it was challenging in that season because, you know, you say you need people to lean on. Right. But for us personally in that season, did we not face lots of rejection? Did we not face lots of people? just kind of like dropping off, not being around as much as we thought they would be or as much as they used to be. Um, We started facing a lot of like battles with people, like just random or out the blue. Like what is really going on? Like what? Like I'm confused how this just transpired out the blue people that we were super close with and like in those seasons this had lasted for years yeah. where it was like the lord kept telling us where i'm taking you these people can't go mm. where i'm taking you they can't go yeah and he started really showing us the c- true colors of people that we are still currently seeing yeah even when we moved to texas yeah seeing people's true colors where it's like Lord, that's why you removed them from my yeah. life. It hurt in that season. Mm-hmm. I was confused. I cried a lot. It was painful for you to remove them because I thought that they was going to be here, God. Mm-hmm. But you removed them for a reason. Yeah. And yeah. he knows the backstory. We we don't. But yeah. And and sometimes people are just in their own feelings. People are just in their own thing. People are going to be people at the end of the day. And yes, challenging. Yes, confusing. Yes, like the rejection was coming left and right. And automatically you got an issue or a problem and everything out of nowhere. And there's no communication as to, well, what the heck did I do? You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? And especially if you're trying to live your life daily and you and you feel like you're doing the same thing every single day and you treat everybody the same, but everybody don't feel the same. Right, right, right. Everybody don't feel like, oh, like I'm... You know, uh, something changed along the way, or sometimes some people. This is just me thinking, bro. Like, I'd be feeling like some people just be making up stuff in their mind yeah. or whatever <laughs> to just sit here and just be upset, right? And it's like, but why? 
you don't you don't have to do that it's a lot of stuff that i feel that people go through and they're facing in their own lives that we have no clue about not saying that we're perfect and that we never do anything because i'm sure we have hurt some people along the way but yes. we are the type of people that if the lord has um checked us or has put it on our hearts like hey you need to go make this right with that person we're not prideful to be like oh no i didn't do nothing to them i'm not going to fix nothing no we will have a conversation we will hash it out we will have a hard conversation we're okay with that and we will apologize on our behalf but i do feel that there are a lot of people that you know if on in our minds it's like what did we do like where did we go wrong like what just happened we were cool we was just you know vibing like last month or two months ago or whatever the case was and then all of a sudden we just had a falling out out the blue like yeah. what's going on i do feel that a lot of times people are just going through their own thing yeah they're going through their own thing and they just take it out on you or yeah. and and here's here is what people need to do you have to always take, uh, you know, inventory on yourself. Yes. Right? And oftentimes, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. we, we're not taking inventory on ourselves. And then when we go in to stock up, we see that there's nothing else there. Yeah. So, therefore, we get upset because now we got to start the process all over again. Right? So, if, if you're constantly taking inventory, you know you're getting low in a certain area. Right. And when I say take inventory, I want y'all to take it and look at it from this standpoint. Right. When I say take an inventory, take inventory on your faith, take inventory on your finances, take inventory on your relationships, take inventory on your social status, take inventory on on all these different things that impact your life. Take inventory on your parenting, on your marriage. Right. Take it. Take inventory on that and see where it's at. And if you feel or see that, hey, we're getting low in this area because all this is kind of like the wheel of life. All these areas are not going to be at a 10 mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. So you got to see that, OK, there's a five in this area of my friendships. So maybe I should be elevating that or figuring out why there's a five there instead of a, an eight or a nine. Why is it not there? And we don't we don't take that that inventory. When we don't take the inventory, we then can lash out on people that we're close to or nitpick or say something and everything that you know, yeah, maybe that person did do something, but was it that deep? You know what I'm saying? So I feel that if once we start taking the inventory uh, in retrospect on ourselves and seeing where we're at and constantly looking in the mirror, that changes things and changes relationships and elevates relationships. And don't be don't be scared to have the hard conversations mm -hmm. and be real inside those conversations because that right there will then elevate the relationship and take it to another level yeah that's the biggest thing i feel i think people will be like oh let's have a hard conversation we're going to be real and then they won't be real or when you start being real with them they're like oh that was super harsh you know i want you to be real with me but then when you do be real with them it's like I didn't think you were going to like be be real with me that real like you know what I mean so don't say that you want me to be real with you if you can't handle mm. the real yeah yeah it's almost like God keep it real with me you don't want God to keep it real with you mm -hmm. let's stop it because you don't because if God was going to keep it real with any of us right me included, we're not exalted from this or, or nothing like that we're not excluded I mean we're not ex excluded from this situation Mm -hmm. If we ask God to keep it real with us, he will he will keep it so real. You you may even feel worse than Job. Yeah. <gasps> you know how real he kept it with Job? Mm -hmm. Was you there when when I made the dirt, when I made the sky, when I made the stars? He was, was you there? eating his words. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Was, was you there when I did this, when I did that? Where was you at when I created this earth? Where was you at when I told the waters and everything to be still and be disciplined to not even cross these particular boundaries? Mm -hmm. Where were you at, right? See, we, we oftentimes we feel we got this entitled mentality and that's a part of the, part yes, of the issue yes, that yes, we face. Yes, absolutely. We got an entitled in mentality and because we feel that people are supposed to walk and worship the ground that we walk on, you know what I'm saying, or that they walk on and everything, therefore, because you feel entitled, you know, subconsciously, right, it's affecting your relationships, it's, ref it, it's reflecting on, on um, you know, how to get to that next level, it, it is, it is impacting in so many different ways that we're like dang like maybe i should fall back and take a look at myself first 
right? Stop blaming people for the decisions that you make. Stop blaming other people and blaming your friends for things or whatever that you have control over, right? It's not my responsibility to take care of you or mm -hmm. in that in that aspect my responsibility is to be your friend my responsibility is is to be there for you is to love you is to is to pray for you in all those things right but it's it's up to god on what he wants to uh to on how he wants to lift you up and how he wants to guide you and how he wants to move you and just because somebody is doing something that you have aspirations for right doesn't necessarily mean that god wants exactly that for you in the same root or the mm -hmm, same way mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it's not saying that god doesn't want it for you but it's saying that god may want to do it differently through you mm -hmm. right and i think that we just have to refocus it because we can get so distracted by the success of other people and not not find what it is that god is truly asking for us so the question really becomes are you creating that war room inside your household? Yeah. Are you turning that wall into a space where God is invited, where it's only you and the Lord, Amen. where you can go to war and you can have that spiritual warfare. You can go in, you can start praying and you can start going in and diving into that relationship there. And maybe the relationship that you're, that you're arguing with this person with and everything. And you're asking God, why? Well, then God is probably using that individual to sit there and say, this is how you treat me. This is this is what you're doing to me. Yeah. Right. This is this is all those things that I've been trying to get you to understand. And you treat me like this all the time. So like you say you want me to keep it real. Well, this is how you're treating me. And sometimes we have to reflect and, and ask the question like, wow, God, am I treating you that way? Mm -hmm. And he's showing us all the time, babe. He's showing us and we just don't see it because we're not we don't think that god can use anybody else or if god could use a donkey he can use a josie amen <laughs> you know what i'm saying so i would That's just want to say that um you know at the end of the day like i'm happy at the fact that where we're at now is not where we were mm -hmm. you know it's and we're in a new space we're in a new position and we have new challenges coming i was gonna say it doesn't go to say that we're not gonna have challenges because oh, yeah. we will have challenges we got some we're challenges just, right now yeah <laughs> you know amen we got some challenges right now but and just keep us in prayer you know like we it's a new level but we understand that we're here on assignment new levels bring new devils yeah you know so I am, I'm happy at the fact that where we're at, but I know that God is with us in every step of the way. And I, and I want y'all to know that God is with y'all every step of the way as well too, you know? So listen guys, if you have any questions and everything, I know we live and everything there as well, but if you guys got mm -hmm. any questions, um, you know, drop it in the chat, drop it in the comments. We'll address those questions and we may go ahead and do like an IG live or something like that um, together or a TikTok. And um, and we'll we'll come on and we'll ask you know answer your questions and everything live. I want to leave y'all with you know a couple of things. I want to leave y'all with an exercise that I feel that may help somebody um, with the depression. And me and my wife we do this periodically, right? And it's called the shifting exercise. And I want y'all to do it. I want y'all to know this is how we gonna, this is how we gonna do it, right? So, all right. So so. So, guys, if you are somebody that's battling a depression, if you're battling anxiety, if you're battling anger, um, this works um, in relationships. It works with teens. This exercise right here, I've been teaching it for a couple of years now. It's one of my favorite exercises to do. So, it's going to be four questions, right? I'm going to try to speed through this for the sake of time. But it's four questions. What do you hate? And you have to use the word hate because we're going to use it for the sake of the conversation. It's that deep. What do you hate? What do you want? What do you love? And what do you stand for this week? I'm not going to go, what do you stand for this year? What's your new year resolution or anything like that? Um, Peepaw said that new year resolution, not new, new year's, years resolutions. Like, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. What do you hate? What do you love? Um, I'm sorry. What do you hate? What do you want? What do you love? And what do you stand for? Okay. So really quick. Hold on one second. JJ, you too loud. All right, here we go. So, all right, babe. So, 
What do you hate? I hate mess. You hate mess. What else do you hate? I hate disorganization. You hate disorganization. What else do you hate? I hate messy people. You hate messy people. <laughs> what else do you hate? Um, I hate people who compete. <laughs> mm, you hate people who compete what else for the wrong hate? reasons because there is some good competition amen amen um what else do you hate i hate um anxiety you hate anxiety what else do you hate i hate being hungry mm. <laughs> you hate being hungry what else do you hate i hate when you don't come when you come home without my starbucks <laughs> you hate when I don't come home with hush and Starbucks. <laughs> what else do you hate? Um, I hate struggling. Mm. You hate struggling. What else do you hate? Um, I hate seeing people hurt. You hate seeing people hurt. It's a lot of hate in your heart. <laughs> what else do you hate? Um, we'll stop there. We'll stop there. Amen. <laughs> All right. Well, what do you want? Tell me what you want. I want to feel joy. You want to feel joy. Mm -hmm. All right. What else do you want? I want unity. Mm. You want unity. What else do you want? Peace. You want peace. What else do you want? Um, I want to get to a level where our finances are like intact. We're yeah. good. All of that good stuff. Finances. You want the finances to be nonstop. Amen. Mm -hmm. What else do you want? Um, I want my kids to be successful. Mm. You want your kids to be successful. Anything else you want? No. Okay. What do you love? Tell me what you love. I love you. You better say me first. <laughs> I love God. Amen. All right, God. I'll play number two. Right. Number two. Number two. Uh, you love God. Amen. What else do you love? I love our kids. You love our kids. What else do you love? I love our new home. You love our new home. What else do you love? Um, I love a beautiful, clean home. Mm, you love a beautiful, clean home. What I else? love candles. Candles. I love a Range Rover. You love Range Rovers? <laughs> I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> I love Starbucks lattes. You love Starbucks lattes? Anything else you love? I love flagging. You love flagging. I love clothes. <laughs> you love clothes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Anything else you love? I love giving to others. Mm, you love giving to others. What else do you love? That's it. That's it? Okay. Honey, what do you stand for this week? Um, Something that's not an action word. Peace. Mm. You stand for peace. Okay. So when I see you not acting so peaceful... I get to check you, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Y'all saw that, right? That wasn't peaceful. <laughs> that was not peaceful. She said, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we already off on the wrong foot. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> she, she was like, she was like, yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, you, gotta, you got boundaries on that peace. So I get to check you, all right? You stand for peace. So that means... You also hold us accountable for peace in the home as well, too. So with this exercise, how do you feel? What was the feeling? Do you feel relieved? Do you yeah, feel relieved. relieved and empty? Empty. Because the reality is, is if you got if you got hate in your heart, you know, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love could do that. So we got to understand that. So use this exercise. Use this exercise to help you. Um, in your family, you and your, your wife, your relationship, um, you know, uh, the people in your church, the people in your community, um, you know, your children, use this exercise. So what would normally happen is we would reverse it. So the other person that was giving the answers would then switch roles and be the facilitator. And then I would then go back and say, so basically I, I would then ask him all the questions that he just asked me and he would answer the questions right. to me. Exactly. 
right? So that's how that that exercise called the shifting exercise. Really, it's called the clearing exercise, but I changed it and put my own spin on it. It's called the shifting exercise. So I would, um, because I'm a firm believer, then you know you got to use your gift to make the shift in your life. All right. So what I want, I want you, I want to leave y'all with that. Take that with y'all. Let us know if that helps. Let us know if you're going to use that exercise, right? And I think we may, if you guys like it, we may do an exercise, something different. Every um, every episode that we have, uh, we may give y'all something uh, to hang on to so that you can take something home, all right? So um, final words, honey, final words? Um, I just want to say for my final words that when it comes to joy and happiness, um, you have to understand that hap- when you say, oh, I just want to be happy, I just want to be happy. Yeah, but happiness only lasts for just a little while. When you begin to flip that and say, I just want to feel joy, I want to be joyful, joy you feel joy in any circumstance, whether you're going through a chaotic, hard, rough season or whether you're going through a really great season in your life. You're going to feel joy. Joy comes from the Lord. And just know that you can't get joy or happiness from people. You can only get that from the Lord himself. And, you know, just turn to him in the times where you're feeling anxious, unhappy, um, going through probably one of the hardest times of your life. Turn to him. He's going to be your sustainer through it all. But again, joy is what you feel that great feeling inside in the hard times and in the good times. You're going to still feel that joy. So that's what I want to leave them with. Amen. And I'll say this, um, you know be restored yeah right be restored in a sense of repentance because in hebrew you know restoreth my soul can mean bringing repentance to be replenished to be renewed to be someone that is ready to get a reset remember like once the bell rings, take your break, sit down, and get ready for the next round. Like, don't continue fighting, you know, just because the bell rung. You know, it's okay to take that break. It's okay to sit down for a second because it's a long road ahead. It's almost like carrying barrels and barrels of water across dry land. And you trying to get from one destination to the other destination and you're carrying these barrels of water on your back. But if you don't sit there and take the rest that you need to take to get that water from one destination to the other, by the time you get there, there's going to be nothing left inside those barrels and nobody's going to be able to have nothing, right? That village that you was delivering that water to, they're not going to have anything because you didn't rest. You just wanted to get there. And I'm just trying to tell you that you're going to get there, but you have to learn that, you know, and this is something that I'm learning as well, too. Taking rest, you know, is necessary, you know, for the journey. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you will run out of gas mm-hmm. and you will be in, a, yourself be in a desert where there is no gas station for you to fuel up at the end. Yeah. So you don't have to be. Um, I know people sit there and say you got to grind, you got to work and everything. I get it and I understand it. And I'm one of those people. I'm a workaholic. But at the same time, I'm understanding that it's okay to take five minutes and go play basketball with your son. It's okay to take, you know, 30 minutes, an hour to go play video games with him. It's okay to take your daughter to, you know, her cheerleading practice. It's okay to take her to gymnastics. It's okay to be the coach of their basketball team or their football team. It's all right. The job is going to get done. Because even within that little bit of time, you're going to have more time than you actually need in order to get it done and get to that that next destination. So don't worry about if it's not getting done. Just focus on, you know, being able to do all you can to a certain point, take your rest, replenish, and then give your all to get to the next position. Amen. Amen. With that being said, y'all, listen, y'all make sure y'all go ahead and subscribe, like, comment. Um, and listen, when we change the mind, y'all, we change the game for myself, Kenneth Allen Thomas, my wife, Jocelyn Thomas, follow us on Instagram. I uh, follow us on uh, TikTok and all that good stuff. All right. And we will see y'all on the flip side. All right. When we change the mind, we change the game. We love we you guys. Later. Peace.